And coach, we find ourselves due east from our nation's capital at FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland. A few minutes ago, it sounded like the 4th of July on the National Mall as the hometown Redskins were introduced to this sold-out crowd. They are set to go as their guys will match up. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line with the Chicago Bears. On the ground with a rookie from Iowa State, David Montgomery. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. Gonna let one. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. It's a gain of 35. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, Defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a start right out of them. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. They snap it at one. Now it's Trubisky. Connecting with Burton here over the middle. A gain of six there on first. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now it's Trubisky, and that is incomplete. I don't think either one of us is surprised about who they just targeted on that one. I mean, they're going to try and get to him as much as possible. Off to a nice start, but unable to haul that one in. Yeah, already looked his way a couple of times on this opening drive. Can't connect there. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Looking to throw again, Trubisky. Yeah, that one's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Now for the field goal try, here's Eddie Pinheiro. From the left hash, this from 46. And this one is right down the middle. And it's 3-0. The Bears hit the scoreboard first. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Washington trotting back out onto the field here offensively. And, Charles, this is a team that you've seen personally weeks one and two, both close division losses. What do you make of the 0-2 start for the Redskins? They've played... A lot like I expected going into the season. I use baseball term for them. Good field, no hit. Meaning, I expected their defense to maybe be a top five defense in the NFL. And their offense might struggle a little bit. Well, against Philadelphia, the offense played really well in the first half. Completely shut down in the second half. They lose a close one. Then against Dallas, they take the lead right away. Then Dallas comes back with a big rush after that. The defense hasn't played up to the standard I expected but they're not going to be an easy out for anyone all year long. Well, once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. Now Keenum throwing middle, but it's incomplete. It was Roquan Smith who got his big hand in there to knock it away. 
When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and 10. Here's Keenum. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. A big kick that time, 52 get yards. Ready, ready, and the Bears take over. Chicago Bears offense taking the field again here. I, I got to tell you, week two, I'm from Indiana, so I have a lot of Bears fans in my timeline on social media. <laughs> and it was so interesting to track during the game because they were so depressed. And then they saved that late with a 53-yard game-winning field goal. Not the best performance, but it did get them, Charles, to one and one. Yeah, and the roughing the passer call that set up the game-winning field goal, I think there were two on And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Throwing on second down. Trubisky toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver, and it's third down. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Rolling to his left. He may try and run for this. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. A running play on first down, and it turns into a fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker, and what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Looking to throw on second down. Trubisky, rush coming, and he's taken down. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. And after that sack we just saw, Trubisky and the Bears deal with a third and long. Check three, check three, check three. Now Trubisky on third and long. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. And if you're an Adrian Peterson fan, that's the sign that you want to see right there on the other end. 
They got to learn to get him down, or this could be a long one. And it's also the sign that his team wanted to see him making that type of a run, having a force and an impact on the game that early. That really demoralizes the defense because they realize it could be a long game trying to get him on the ground. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. This game not quite as good as the last, but still over 40 yards between the two. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Off play action, Keenum. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. The intended target was the rookie, Terry McLaurin. And that'll bring up second down. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Back to throw, Keenum. His throw incomplete. He was looking to get that one to Chris Thompson. But now it'll be third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. This Nine. offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have check, him looking check, at third check, and ten. Check, check, check. Keenum throwing once more. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Redskins with their first trip to the red zone thus far. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Again, it's Keenum. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Jordan Reed was the intended target, but it'll be second down. Well, it certainly appears that they're going to try and keep getting him the football. That's the third time they've looked in his direction. Unfortunately, haven't completed one yet, but I'm not sure they're going to shy away from him. They feel like they've got something there, and they want to capitalize on it. I think you're right. We're only in the first quarter, so a lot of opportunities ahead. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. A gain of 13. It's a first down. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive is a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, okay, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. They'll run for it with Peterson. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. So they're backed up to the three-yard line, second and goal. They try again with Peterson, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll make it third and goal. From the gun, here's Keenan. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. So now on fourth down, the Redskins will hand things over to their kicker, Dustin Hopkins. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. And Hopkins' kick is good. And that will tie us at 3-3. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder, are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six?
Field goals all we've had so far. 3-3 now as the kick is away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Bears offense now gets set to head back onto the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Now Trubisky to throw. Caught out left side by Robinson. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. It'll be a loss of one, and they're going to face a third down. Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss, another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play call, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point the kicker. <laughs> exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that'll help him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about that. Toe bash. <laughs> Super toe. Successful start to the drive, 17 yards, and moves the sticks. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. Now Keenan. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Davis. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. And with a flag down, he goes down. So they're able to sack him. Now the penalty looks like it could be holding. Let's find out. This third down looking very tough after the holding penalty. Third and long. A shotgun snap for Keenum. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. Well, he bounced up after taking a sack and took a shot downfield. I think a lot of us thought maybe he'd run draw in that situation. Instead, tried to get all back in one play. Yeah, third and long, thought he needed the deep pass, couldn't connect it. Maybe he was hoping for a penalty downfield to give him the yardage they needed. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. Well, from that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. Check one, 180. Check 53, come on. Hey, check, check. Hey, hi, hi. To Montgomery to begin the drive. 
And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. I think they're ahead of schedule now after that run. They might be bold with this second down call after that type of a game. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Davis. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that'll bring up a third down. Out of the gun, Trubisky. He's got his tight end, Burton. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it. Sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Trubisky's throw into the hands of Burton and up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. The full start backs him up five, first and 15. Play action, now Trubisky. To the right side, complete to Miller. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and that's going to make it second and 14. To throw again on second down. Trubisky, middle of the field, it's Robinson. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On third and one, it's Trubisky finding Gabriel complete. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Redskins 36. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. First down, here's the run to Montgomery. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. From the 31, Trubisky. This one out left to the tight end, Burton. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Bears have taken the lead. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead is now 10-3. to
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded at the 8. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive on, just past the 30-yard line. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Complete. Richardson has it. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Bears' 45-yard line. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Just beating the play clock. Keenum. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Mike that last up. catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Shotgun handoff to Thompson. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I'll bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. From the gun, it's Keenum. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Paul Richardson there. That'll bring up second down. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. He's got to throw it better. Got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Now left side on the swing pass. Nothing on the screen that time. Now it's third it, down. Baby. So nothing there on the screen that time. That means all that great acting they tried on offense went for naught, didn't it? Because you have to try and influence them. Make them think that you're doing something else. Make them think that they can get to the passer by letting them by and then setting up the screen and getting downfield. Didn't happen at all. Give a lot of credit to the defense for not tumbling to that one. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Khalil Mack able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. And here the pressure from the outside linebacking spot. And normally when that happens and they're able to get home, that means the other guys on his team helped him out a lot. That They occupied people to allow it to be no less than a one-on-one -on -one situation. Allows him to get home. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. Let's go. Let's go. It's no go. good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, I was watching him in warm-ups, and he hit a 62-yarder that hit the crossbar and went over. This one a little bit inside of that, but not enough leg. And the difference is what? Well, your live conditions, right? Live conditions, game conditions are a whole lot different than practice, where you just pop it up there, no rush, no pressure. I think maybe that takes a couple yards away from you when you have to do it when it's real. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. 12 yards there and a first down. 
when you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. The first down carry for Davis. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. That's complete right side to Gabriel. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's another 10 yards on that one and another first down. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window, he fired a bullet in there for the completion. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. He was trying to hit Taylor Gabriel that time. And that'll bring up second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Trey Burton, the one he was looking for. And that takes us from second to third down. Trubisky to throw again. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. But that was certainly an aggressive call and an aggressive play. Instead of just going for the first down, took the shot in the end zone, went for the touchdown. Yeah, and on third down, maybe it said, forget about the sticks. We want six. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. The kick by Pinheiro is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And here come the Redskins now. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. In on the stop, the former Georgia Bulldog, Roquan Smith. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking for Paul Richardson there, and that'll make it third down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. This to McLaurin out on the left side. 
And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run with Thompson, and he'll be stopped right at midfield. Same exact result as last play, a pickup of 11. Although his reputation as a speedy runner precedes him, it's always fun to watch him work. It is eye-opening, isn't it? Because when you see him get the ball and just go, in addition to that speed, it helps out his blockers. They don't have to hold blocks for long because he's just going to speed right past them. Here we go. Terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. There defensively was Buster screen to knock it away. Trying to get that one to his tight end, and they've been trying to get the ball to him, but as of yet, unable to successfully complete one. But you know there's usually a nice comfort zone in throwing to the tight end. Great sight lines, usually right in the middle of the field. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Keenum looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Richardson. And he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. On, that one, Let's a go. gain of 20 and a first down. Keenum now on first down. Caught on the right side, Reed. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now Keenum again. And down he goes. Keenum is sacked. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Gone, Keenum. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Hopkins kick is good and they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13 to 6 So in the end they had the ball for 10 plays, but the drive gets them three not six Is it okay if I give credit to both sides on this one? Absolutely. All right, let's start defensively. They hung in there 10 play drive But they stiffened when they got close to the goal line made them kick a field goal and for the offense 10 play drive They might be a little disappointed. They got a field goal But they moved the ball down the field with dispatch and came away with points Following the made field goal for three, Hopkins now to kick it off. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. You're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you've got the lead. It's definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. 
Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield, incomplete. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield, but that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Again on second and ten, it's Trubisky, and that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant you to flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. You rarely call your punter a weapon, but he certainly was there. How about that? Pinning him down at the one-yard line and helping out the defense in a big way. I'm telling you what, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I might be thinking safety right now. Right here, right here. The carry here for the big tight end. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Eddie Jackson with a tackle. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, set to resume. Here we go with the second half. The Bears holding the lead and ready to receive the kick. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. On second down, it's Thompson. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Not the start to the drive they were hoping for. That run doesn't get them much at all. No, not at all. And that leaves them with third and long, which means you've got to dial up something pretty good. Think your best player with a play that he likes to run best. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. From the gun, here's Keenum. Throw left side complete. It's Thompson. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Ten yards there, good for a Redskin first down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially 
if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. To Thompson on the draw. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and 10. Following the penalty, it's Peterson. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, the previous play went to the offense with a nice run, but that last play we just saw certainly went to the defense. So you're keeping a little bit of a ledger there, aren't you? Tally. You know, somebody wins, someone loses. But you get the sense offensively, they're continuing to probe around, trying to find the runs that are going to work, and then they'll go to them. And hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose. And this is picked up by the Bears. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. The Bears in good field position to start out first and 10. Now Trubisky to throw. And some room to roam now. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. 50. Come on, come on. Tight end right, tight end right. We got three, we got three, fellas, we got three. We got three. A play fake to Montgomery. Now Trubisky. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Yeah, yeah. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. Let's Here go. now is second and 10, again from the 41. Only two there on the dump off. It's I'm third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. First down marker at the 31. It's third down. Off the play fake. Here's Trubisky. Well, the two men come together, and it's incomplete. Excellent work defensively. Brings up fourth down. Brandon, it looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. Here's Pat O'Donnell now. He's been terrific so far. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, had pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here a pass for negative yardage obviously no good maybe he shouldn't have thrown it or maybe he shouldn't have caught it and i think we were seeing it at the same time weren't we maybe you let that one go right because you can see the lost yardage about to develop but that goes against every instinct of a receiver they're taught to catch everything so it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play and a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Nine good yards here on the run, and now third down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. From the gun on third down, Keenum. And this is going to be incomplete. 
And we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking out nicely. Good English on that punt. They'll start on the ground with Montgomery. And he will double the space they have to work with as they take it from the two to the four. Yeah. Well, not a game that you're going to go crazy about, but when you start at your own two-yard line, any type of space is good for the offensive guys. Yeah, you just can't go backwards from here. They did it. Now we'll see if they can keep it on schedule here on second down. They'll keep pounding here with Montgomery. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Trubisky from his end zone on third and long. And that is incomplete. Well, the fans should be applauding this defense right now. It's an excellent job. They force a three and out, and they should be able to set up their guys with great field position, probably near midfield or better. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll come on for his fifth kick of the night. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. That's taken it around the 40. Officially, that'll go as a 52-yard punt. Not too shabby. And it'll be Redskins football now with a first and 10. So out now come the Redskins. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Buster Screen is able to bring him down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Quinn. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. They have the Let's first down with that gain of four yards. Well, partner, what do you think? Might have been four down territory if they didn't pick it up, but... Yeah, it's a moot point now. I was curious, though, if they didn't get it there, would they have gone for it? I guess we'll never know. Yeah, we didn't have to make that call, but I have a feeling both of us would have said, go for it. They run again on first down, Peterson. And Peterson, what happened? He lost the football. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. On second down, Peterson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. He already has two sacks to his credit, now another tackle for loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? 
they're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, they've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible. Because right now, he is wrecking things for them. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. Here's a run on first down that doesn't accomplish anything. In fact, he's going to be tackled behind the line for a loss of one. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. They run again with Peterson. And only able to get two here. Stopped at the 30. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. To throw, it's Keenum. And he finds McLaurin. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. With that catch, he goes over 100 yards receiving on the night. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. First down, here's a run with Peterson. A good display of power, but it will only get him just inside the five to the four. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? On second down and four. Keenum, and it's caught. Four yards the pick up, first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Shotgun snap for Keenum. This will be caught at about the five. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Well, you throw it this close to the goal line, usually you're thinking touchdown. Here they actually complete it but lose yardage. When you're this close to the goal line, you have to anticipate that maybe you're going to see a defense that you can make a case that there's 11 in the box. There's just no room. So I'm with you. You've got to find a way to push things downfield a little bit. Any type of space is better than what we just saw there. And that end result, not one that's satisfactory to them. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now it's AP, Adrian Peterson. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that will bring up an interesting decision here on fourth and goal. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. Keenum going for it on fourth. And this is taken in for a Redskins touchdown. Terry McLaurin there to make the grab as they can now even this game here in the fourth quarter with the extra point. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals before this one they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now. They're starting to move the ball well.
All square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. This is taken at the three. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. That throw good for four. It's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Play action. Now Trubisky stepping up. He's going to keep it. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. On, and they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Redskins' 43. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking <laughs> shots, your quarterback, but... It's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now it's Trubisky. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. From the red zone now, here's Trubisky on first down. Throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. The intended target, Mike Davis. And it's second down. I think he's a little trigger happy right there. And it turned into an ill-advised throw into their zone. Well, we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. That time it fell incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Play action. It's Trubisky. Throw left side complete. That's Robinson. And he'll be out of bounds. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. They'll try to punch it in with Davis. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Yikes, a four-yard loss really sets him back now for second down. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On second and goal, Trubisky, his pass caught at the four. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. This Washington defense, they've stood tall the first two plays. Now third and goal. From the shotgun is Trubisky. And yeah, that's caught for a bare touchdown. It's the tight end, Trey Burton. 
Trey Burton, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And they're able to break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Let's go. Let's go. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Throwing on first down is Keenum. And down he goes. Keenum is sacked. Khalil Mack in there to get him yet again. That is his third sack tonight. They can't figure him out. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. To throw is Keenum. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Reed. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that. But it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Keenum. He's got it complete to Thompson. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. It's a pickup of 13, but they're still a bit short, and it'll be fourth down. Here's Tressway now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of two. It's second down now two yards on the carry there it'll be second down offensively with the lead you want to run the ball keep the clock going but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too right so how do you do that and not come back on your heels yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock that's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Mike. 180. You better Say, say, say. They go play action. Trubisky. And that is incomplete. 
Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll come on to kick for a six time tonight. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a pressure, and he's taken down. A bear sack. Khalil Mack, make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Back to throw, Keenum. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. They went with the dime look that time on defense. Just flooded the field with defensive backs. Blanketed everyone. Took away all the passing angles. Thus, the incompletion. Here's Tressway now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. Right now clinging to a one-score lead, Charles, and I think operating within that four-minute offense with a little less than four minutes to go applies here, right? It certainly does, and that means the playbook is still wide open. But you are a little bit more careful about what you're calling. You want plays they are going to gain yardage how would you say it, consistently, mm -hmm. right? You don't need the big shots downfield, but make sure the clock continues to run. Pile up the first downs, and the goal, end the game with your quarterback kneeling down at the end, and you still have the lead. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And his throw is incomplete. This a very important drive, and that incompletion leads to a very important third down here if they're going to try and get the football back. Yeah, getting it back, absolutely crucial to their chances to try and win this game. I would expect a lot of pressure here. They can't afford to let them continue to get first downs and eat away at the clock. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now it's Trubisky. He's got his tight end, Burton. And he'll have it past midfield go, almost to the 40 before being taken down. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. Let's go, let's go! And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now Trubisky going to give this to Montgomery. The Redskins now going to use the first of their three timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Second and long, but you got to figure this almost certainly another run. Watch the screen. Pass. 
Again, they'll go ground with Montgomery. And boy, this Redskin defense charged up now. They stop him behind the line again. And quickly, we're going to get another stop here with 1.54 left as they call the timeout defensively. So now facing a third and 16, following back-to-back -back running plays that went in the wrong direction. On the draw, this is Davis. And now we're going to get a timeout defensively. So another stop, 150 left in the football game. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. <laughs> Keenum and the Redskins, down 20 to 13, a minute 45 to play. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. taken down Khalil Mack in there to drop him as that clock continues to run this has been a tough one for this offensive line it appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game the way they've been pushed around six sacks given up in this one clock running as the Redskins try to hurry up now Keenum open man is Quinn he completes it they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Back to throw. He's going to let it fly. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it, and he'll return this one just shy of midfield to the 49. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10. And Trubisky down to a knee, and that is all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. So this one in the win column for the Chicago Bears. And I tell you, this was a fun one. Just a close game. Nothing comes easy in this league, as you know. They had to work for that victory. I've got to go back to what you just said. Nothing comes easy in this league. How many times have we talked to coaches prior to a game and assessed, you know, the strengths, the weaknesses, the whole deal? Even in games when one coach was a decided favorite, what do they always say to us? But you do know, this is really a seven-point league. Seven points either way usually decides a ball game. We had exactly that in this one. And not only that, but this is a gutsy road victory, one they can hang their hat on. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL.